So it's day one of our grand Italian adventure and we are at the airport now. Ready to pick up my brother and his wife and we will head on out to Bologna. The Bologna Airport has a kiss and fly area with 10 minutes free parking so you can pick up your family or drop them off if you are there for 10 minutes or less. We really liked the Bologna Airport because it's not a huge airport so it wasn't terribly busy, easy to find where you're going, and it was cheaper than flying into the Venice Airport. Today we parked in the parking garage that is also very close so that we could put our family's luggage into the car because we are going to take a bus from the airport down to Bologna. It can be difficult to find parking in Italy so we just decided to take the bus and forget about that. So you can buy your tickets on the bus typically or you can um, find an app that you can purchase your tickets that way. Just make sure to stamp your ticket when you get on the bus. We switched buses at the hospital and got on the bus that took us to the downtown area. First place we were headed was the two towers and we wanted to see these beautiful towers right in the center of town and everything else we wanted to see was within walking distance. So let's go on a walking tour. Here are the two towers. The Garrisenda Tower is the shorter tower and they had to actually take the top part of that tower off because it was leaning so badly. The Asinelli Tower is the one that we're able to take the steps up to. If you take a picture with your phone, you can take the QR code and buy tickets. Tickets are $5 for adults, $3 for kids. I'm sorry, Euro. We are in Italy after all. And speaking of that, it is 97 meters tall, which is about 305 feet. The Statue of Liberty on its pedestal is 319 feet. So walking up all of these 498 internal stairs, is like walking up to the very tippy top of the Statue of Liberty. So that is about 30 stories of steps that you're walking up and there are landings every little way so you can stop, catch your breath and it's actually not too bad. It's definitely a lot of cardio and if you do not like cardio, it's probably not the thing for you. If you do not like heights, it's probably not for you. The towers were built in the 12th century, so you are climbing a piece of medieval history. How cool is that? Here's a map I'm going to show you of how many towers there used to be in Bologna. There used to be 80 to 100 towers, and now these are some of the only ones that exist anymore. I thought that was pretty cool. When you get to the top, you're rewarded with a beautiful view. That church there was San Giacomo Maggiore, which was built in the 14th century. One of the nicknames that Bologna has is Bologna La Rosa because of all their red brick buildings. And from the whole way up here, you get a really good view of the classic Italian red tiles that they use on the roofs. I enjoyed looking closely at the bricks they used on this um, giant tower and imagining what it was like for the people to actually be building it in the Middle Ages. As you look out over the city, you see the Basilica de San Petronio, the patron saint of Bologna. We are actually headed to that square and that church next. And from here, you can see the straight roads that lead out from the center part of the city where the tower is. Now we're going to go back down. The last few steps are pretty tight right there, so only one person at a time. And then as we started to go down, there are signs that say that the right of way is given to the people who are going down. So if you're w going up, when someone else is coming down, you had to step aside, as you can see that gentleman doing, and waiting for people to come down, and then you continue up. So there were rules to the road, even in the tower. Another thing that Bologna is known for is their porticos. They have over 24 miles of porticos around their city, and it's a great way to walk the city in the rain and not get wet, or if it's really sunny out, to enjoy some shade. Here is the Basilica of St. Petronius. It's a beautiful building, and it would have been the largest church in the world if the uh, Construction hadn't been halted. Um, legend has it that one of the popes halted the construction because this would have been larger than uh, St. Peter's Basilica and the Vatican. So instead, he encouraged them to put the money towards the university, which is right there, the University of Bologna. And due to that, it was not the largest and part of the facade is still unfinished. 
When we got to the church, they were closing for a reposo, which is their lunch hour, and um, they were changing out their guard. Normally, we don't see a military presence at churches here in Italy, but this one specifically has had terror threats because evidently there's a fresco inside that depicts Muhammad, and so there have been some extremists that have tried to bomb the place for that. So anyways, uh, we actually did get to go inside after... They open back up but like a lot of churches they do not allow you to take pictures or video inside so we were not able to get footage of that which is sad because it's a really neat place they had a meridian line designed by the astronomer giovanni cassini he was teaching at the university and that is a really cool aspect of the church that i wish we were able to show you Walking away from the Basilica out of the square, you come to the Fountain of Neptune, which is a very popular fountain in the city of Bologna, and we walk down the street to Pizzeria Nettuno, which seemed to be a family-owned business. It, um, they made some classic Italian pizza, and we learned a good lesson here, too. If it does not say on the description that there is cheese on the pizza, then there is no cheese on the pizza. My brother figured that out when he ordered the pizza that came without cheese, but it was still very good. And we had other pizzas coming that had cheese and toppings on it. So definitely something you have to try when you go to Italy, of course, is real authentic pizza. Next, we walk back to the Basilica. And as I said, I couldn't take video inside of there, but next to the Basilica is the oldest continuously running university in the world, Bologna University. And I'm showing you right now what it looks like inside there. We could have taken all afternoon just looking around at the beautiful frescoes, all of the history that's been there since it was started in 1088. The university is still in use today. In fact, it is one of the largest universities in Europe with 90,000 students. The Anatomica Teatro at the University of Bologna was one of the places I really wanted to see. This is a room made completely out of spruce. Even the statues are made of wood, and it is where they did dissections as early as 1636. They would have that marble table in the middle, and they would do their dissection while the medical students watched. One thing I found very interesting is that during the Second World War, the theater was almost completely destroyed, and after the war ended, they found the original pieces in the rubble and had to rebuild all of this so that you could see now today what it would have looked like back then with the original pieces. At the very center in the ceiling is the statue of Apollo and around the outside in crevices they have statues of notable uh, people like Hippocrates and Gallimus. Our three euro ticket not only gained us access to this anatomical theater, but also to the humanities school where there was this large room that they have had many notable speakers in before. Around the outside, they have many leather bound books that are all encased in these cases to keep them safe. And the thing that I was super excited about was I would get to look into the library. This library is extremely old. It's as old as the school. And you can look through a door on the side here and see in to some of almost a million book collection. So we got to look in, smell the wonderful books, but we weren't allowed into the library because in order to go inside, you have to prove that you were there to study and we couldn't really prove that. Another thing to note is that if you get to go into the library, they're going to make you leave a form of ID and also make you put all of your items into a locker because you are not allowed to bring anything in that could perhaps hide a old book that you might be trying to steal. So they're very careful about that and I'm glad because it's important that we keep these things safe and it was just so much fun to see the books in the library. Well, after we finished at the university, we headed out and caught a bus that took us back to the airport to get our car, and we drove to Vinci to our Airbnb. The reason we chose Vinci is because it is about halfway in between Florence and Pisa, which were our next stops. This Airbnb was directly across from the Da Vinci Museum, right by the birthplace of Da Vinci, as you probably already figured out, since we stayed in Vinci, that is where Leonardo was from. Leonardo of Vinci. Sadly, on this trip, we weren't able to go to the museum, but I would definitely recommend it. It looked really cool. I hope you'll come back tomorrow because we're going on a walking tour of Florence. Other places we're going to see on our trip, 
We're going to go to Pisa to see the Leaning Tower. We're going to go to Rome. We'll go to the Amalfi Coast, and then we'll head back up north to see Milan and Venice. You will not want to miss this. Ciao!